Thank you for the invitation to present on intellectual property and health. I plan to introduce you briefly to the intellectual property framework on the international level and its domestic implementation. We're going to look at the value chain for health products and how it interacts with patents and other intellectual property rights. The World Intellectual Property Organization is a UN specialized agency dedicated to promoting the protection of the right of creators and innovators in their intellectual property throughout the world through cooperation among states and where appropriate in collaboration with other international organizations. The secretariats of WHO, WIPO and WTO maintain a well-functioning working relationship on issues around global health, innovation and intellectual property and trade. The trilateral corporation wants to contribute to enhancing the empirical and factual information basis for policymakers. A tangible outcome of our trilateral partnership is first of all the trilateral study entitled Promoting Access to Medical Technologies and Innovation, which has been made available in all six UN languages and can be downloaded from our respective websites. Based on this publication, we have commonly developed a trilateral executive distance learning course, which is regularly run by the WIPO Academy. WIPO administers 26 international agreements, including the WIPO Convention. These agreements and the WTO TRIPS agreement define the international intellectual property framework. The extent to which international framework agreements require action by the national legislator depends on two things. First, whether the constitutional system of a state permits provisions of an international convention to be self-executing. And that means if provisions are directly applicable to private parties without further intervention by the national legislation or possibly even against differing provisions of such legislation. And second, whether the provisions of the international convention concerned permit such direct application to private parties. Determining a country's optimal choice from within the available range of options is the central consideration in the design of a national IP regime. Flexibilities when implementing the international framework are not just TRIPS flexibilities. Flexibility is a cross-cutting issue among intellectual property policies and other related policies. Flexibility means that international treaties providing options have to be implemented in the national legal system in order to be recognized as source de droit. In this context, countries can determine how a right can be acquired, what the scope of the right is, and how it would be enforced. Flexibility exists when implementing the TRIPS agreement, but also beyond the TRIPS agreement. For example, when a country determines details of the patent filing, examination, and grant procedures. Use of patent flexibilities alone does not necessarily achieve public health objectives. For example, the choice of a country's exhaustion regime can determine one factor relevant for parallel importation of medicines. However, exhaustion alone does not allow parallel imports for which, for example, no regulatory approval has been granted. A policy objective can be addressed through different mechanisms. Let's look at one example. Under Article 27.3 of the TRIPS Agreement, members may exclude from patentability, diagnostic, therapeutic, and surgical methods. Article 53 of the European Patent Convention as revised in November 2000 says that European patents on such methods are not granted. Also, the common intellectual property regime of the Andan community excludes these methods from being patentable. For Japan and Morocco, these methods are patentable subject matter, but they are not regarded as industrially applicable and therefore a patent will not be granted on such methods. 
In the US, a patent would be granted if all patentability requirements are met. But US law provides for an exception for medical practitioners. You see how countries have chosen different approaches to implement the same policy objective. Implementation of the international framework on the national level is really key to understanding how flexibilities support national policy. Access to health technologies does not depend entirely on a single factor, but involves a range of steps and factors which you can conceptualize as a value chain. Access begins with research and development of a product. Medicines and medical devices need to be approved by a regulatory authority. Production depends on availability of raw materials and manufacturing capacity, and it needs to meet quality standards, such as good manufacturing practice for medicines. Health products have to be selected and procured by trained and knowledgeable staff and under transparent procurement rules. Medical products need to be transported around the world. Importation requirements impose formalities and tariffs. You need a healthcare and distribution infrastructure for a product to reach a patient. Intellectual property is relevant at each stage of this value chain. Different types of intellectual property law play their role at the various steps of that value chain. For example, at the research stage, protection of trade secrets, patents, and copyrights may be more relevant and design rights and trademarks. The latter rights may be significant at the production and distribution stages. What does a patent allow to do? The blunt answer is a patent does not allow to do anything. A patent does not give permission to use the invention. It does not allow commercialization of a product. It does not extend property to the tangible object. Patents are exclusive rights. The rights conferred by a patent once granted depend on whether the subject matter is a product or a process. A product patent confers on its owner the exclusive rights to prevent third parties from defined actions, making, using, offering for sale, selling or importing the patented invention. A process patent confers on its owner the exclusive rights to prevent third parties from using the process and from the listed actions with respect to the product obtained directly by the process. The latter may confuse. What it means is a situation where a process is patent protected in one country. The process can be used in another country where the patent is not in force for production, no problem. However, the products resulting directly from that process must not be imported into the country where the process patent is in force without the patent owner's consent. In practice, patents are not only used to exclude competitors, but also to establish partnerships through licensing. Patent owners can assign, transfer by succession, or license their patents. A license agreement is a contract in which the holder of intellectual property allows the other party to use that intellectual property against the payment of royalties free of charge for a certain field of use in a certain territory for a restricted time or for the life of the patent. If there's no intellectual property, you cannot conclude a license agreement. Why should a licensee pay for what is not protected? An agreement that does not include a consent to use intellectual property is not a license agreement. Agreements on the acquisition of goods for employment, for consulting services are not license agreements. An agreement to collaborate on the development of something is per se not a license agreement, but most likely has clauses on intellectual property determining the relationship among the parties and their respective employees with respect to intellectual property. However, licenses are frequently used to allow pharmaceutical companies to further develop and or produce a medical technology using technology which is protected by a third party under mutually agreed terms. 
patents and marketing approval are separate issues. The grant of a new patent on a new medicine does not give the right holder the right to sell the medicine without the approval of the regulatory authority. And for regulatory approval, it is irrelevant whether or not a patent is granted. Yes, some countries require applicants for regulatory approval to submit patent information, and they do not allow their regulatory authorities to grant marketing approval when a relevant patent exists. Patent linkage is a separate issue, also a policy option, a flexibility. Intellectual property rights have a specific role. The intellectual property system can contribute to creating and maintaining an appropriate environment for a range of diverse activities. Intellectual property rights are tools of innovation policy, industry policy, and market policy, and help to support innovation and access. Intellectual property does not appear to address health directly. For patents, Article 27 of the WTO TRIPS agreement stipulates that patents are available to protect innovation in all fields of technology. However, is health a technology? Patents provide legal protections for inventions, and innovation is a very topical and relevant issue for health. Innovation in the health area is desirable and much needed. Trademarks are signs which can be used to distinguish goods or services. However, health is neither a sign nor a commercial good or a service. Trademarks support distribution of products, for example, medicines, and can serve as an identifier for health products and services. Trademarks do not make sure that the medicine is of good quality. Quality must be ensured through following standards of good manufacturing practice. Trademarks help identifying products which are good and which are bad. Patients will link a trademark to a medicine that works fine or a medicine that does not help or has side effects. They will develop trust if the quality is all right. Trademark protection is most relevant intellectual property right for originator products and generic medicines to support distribution and hence it is relevant for access to medicines. Health is not a literary or artistic work which could be protected by copyright. Copyright protection can be an issue for a generic producer who needs to produce a package insert and wants to base this on the model used for the original medicine. The paper may not simply be copied, while the content, the information, is not under copyright protection. Health is not an ornamental or aesthetic aspect of an article which could be protected by industrial design rights. The design right may exist for the form of a tablet or a tablet package. Design rights suppose, support those who produce and commercialize those products. Patients are not the direct addressees of intellectual property rights. However, if the intellectual property rights system is set up appropriately, and that means it considers all relevant policy priorities in a holistic manner, patients eventually benefit from the system for innovation and access to medicines. Intellectual property rights are addressing and supporting those whose business is innovation, research, development, production, trade, investment, commercialization, and distribution. And from that perspective, intellectual property is able to support access to health technologies. WIPO provides intellectual property registration services, notably the possibility to file international patent applications under the Patent Corporation Treaty, to register international trademark registrations under the Madrid system, and to register design rights under the Hague system. These services are very relevant and are strongly used by all health actors. For example, medical technology, including pharmaceuticals, is the single technology field in which most PCT applications are filed and where there is the highest growth rate in filings. These applications and registrations support their owners in their business activities. 
Innovation and access to innovation is at the origin of the intellectual property system. Patents, for example, do not only protect inventors for some time and in a defined territory from competition. They make technology available for use once a patent has expired. They make knowledge about technology available immediately as soon as the patent documents are published. Patent documents are generally published before a patent is granted. This information can stimulate and further inform research, no matter whether a patent is in force or not. Through the Patent Cooperation Treaty, through cooperation between WIPO and intellectual property offices and around the world, and through the efforts of national and regional offices, Databases have been created which make large amounts of technology information available to the public through the internet, which would otherwise remain on paper, hidden in documentation rooms in patent offices. We believe that a solid understanding of the functioning of the intellectual property system is essential for the ability to use the system, including the whole range of flexibilities, which are in fact available to design an intellectual property system so that it fulfills its function as a public policy instrument and from which countries can benefit. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Hans. That was actually, uh, it was very inspiring before we continue to the next uh, steps. And I was thinking about one thing you mentioned that uh, the intellectual property and health is not directly linked. However, I have one, maybe I have one good example and it's uh, happened uh, more than 60 years ago when Volvo actually invented this uh, three point uh, uh, safety belt and they patented it. But what they did, uh, they shared this patent with the whole industry, their designs and thus they actually during these from the 1959, they saved uh, uh, probably billions of lives around the world. So I think it's uh, there is a great example how patents are in somewhat directly related with uh, with human lives, with uh, human health. So I think maybe there is a point of argue there. Um, and then uh, maybe a question for you. So I recently read also uh, um, a report from uh, World Intellectual Property Organization that in the past hundred years. Uh, the, uh, the innovation has grow, the grown immensely and exponentially, as well as the patent applications. How do you see it? How do you cope with this uh, growth, with this uh, intensifying of uh, industry, such as digital uh, transformation, from the organizational point of view, from the uh, opportunity to service all, all the one the, who wants to apply for the patents and uh, bring the innovation to the world? Yeah, thank you for that question. The intellectual property system has to develop. It has to, to cope with such developments. And it is part of the mandate of my organization, WIPO, to work with offices to cope with such developments. And this is, I think, what, um, what we are doing together with offices, as offices are cooperating among themselves to deal with the increased numbers of applications. And I think that is a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, what do you see? What is uh, actually in the world of uh, intellectual property if you are viewing it from the current point of view, from the trends, what is happening in the technology? Uh, what are the challenges in terms of the intellectual property rights? For the companies, for, for the organizations? It depends a lot from which angle you approach it. If you look at it from the intellectual property, I think that you are discussing here in the, in the seminar that is, um, Health. I think, addressed. But we have, I mean, the element that I could possibly contribute from the political discussion is the access to, to medicines and access to health technologies point of view. Because, I mean, every... Um, financial impact has two sides. Mm -hmm. If you, on the one hand, you, you can use intellectual property rights to keep competitors out of the market to generate value. And on the other hand, these impose costs on the health system. 
also that has two sides and here to find a good balance between the policies on health and the policies on intellectual property is possibly a, a challenge uh, where the world is very much aware of and which is the world is in, in, in the process of discussing that. And um, I, I would see this really as, as a huge challenge to bring this in harmony. We believe that it is not excluded. We believe that uh, intellectual property is a system that works in the public interest and that can be used to support also health policies. And um, I mean, that is what, what I would answer to you. Yes, thank you.